and because of stuff that had went on and had went down to Florida and everything for family stuff, I was not able to make a calendar. So I'm going to ask and I'm going to do something different tonight. You want me to say that? No. No. Unless you want to say that. But I want to ask this. Tonight, if you have a testimony, bring it with you tonight and share your testimony. Because I want to get it and put it on Facebook to where your testimony can be shared with others. Because testimony is a touching to somebody else. And kind of will give a brief testimony with what has been going on here. Like a lot of you know that I, I had to go to Florida for a family circumstance. And it, in a way for it, it was a bittersweet kind of deal. Even though my dad passed away Thursday, my brother and his wife welcomed a newborn baby in Friday. Oh my. So it was wow. back to back. And then on top of that, knowing the people who my dad knew and actually getting to talk to them and to fellowship with them, here lately they have been messaging me saying, hey, just to let you know we are praying Amen. and Praise just fellowshipping, even though it's, it's through a text message. Yesterday there was one through Messenger on Facebook. And, you know, just to let you know how powerful Facebook is with this, with what messages we have been recording, it has been hitting Haiti. And the reason why I know that is because the man that my dad had fellowship with and had done crusades with in Haiti has been messaging me from Haiti saying, just to let you know, we are watching you and we wow. are supporting you. Amen. So the messages do get out there. Praise the Lord. And tell him that he's inviting you to come. And he's like, What's that? He's telling yes. him that he's inviting yeah. you. Out yes. There. I've only met the man one time, and he said, just to, I cannot wait till the day that you decide to come here. He said, just to let you know, you can stay at my place if you come to Haiti. And he said, we will do crusades. And this individual, he has four other churches underneath him. And I think three, if not four, of their school. He actually builds schools to where they can teach their children down there in Haiti. Praise the Lord. So it is. is good. It, it goes to show you just because something happened, there's always something greater out of it. Yes. And it has been a blessing for sure. Praise the Lord. So today my message is coming out of Ezekiel chapter 37. Verses 1 through 14. The title of my message is The Power of Words. This message will either tell you, tear you down or it will build you up. And it's liable to do both in the same sermon. Let me cry. Before I read my verses, Out of, I'm going to read a uh, short couple of verses out of James chapter 3, 7 and 9. And I pulled this out of the Message Bible. Just remember the Message Bible is actually, it's not a translation. It's more, more of a paraphrase to give people to, when they read it, they can understand the Bible. Verse chapter 3, verse 7 through 9 in the Message, it says, this is scary. You can tame it a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild. A wanton killer. With our tongues, we can bless God our Father. And with the same tongue, we can curse the very men and women that is made in His image. Curse and blessings come out of the same mouth. And it is so true. Out of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 14, it says, The hand of the Lord, this is coming out of the New King James Version, the, 
The hand of the Lord comes upon me and brought me out with the Spirit. And the Lord set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pause and then all around. And behold, there was very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord, the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, say to the breath, Thou said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slings, that they may live. So I prophesied as I commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, and our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your grave. O my people, I brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, that you shall know that I am the Lord, has spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Amen. Yes, praise the Lord. The power of word. You can either build up somebody or you can build them down. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Your tongue can speak life or death unto someone, even to ourselves. Sometimes we allow... How many of us have heard this saying, you allowed your alligator mouth to overload your hummingbird hind end? <laughs> Sometimes we are easy to run down and to judge somebody by the cover without even reading the book. You know, last night we was in the midst when we was leaving Team Challenge, I was talking to three, three of the men Two of them had sat at our table. And as I was walking away, I stopped and Jessica says, are you looking for someone to talk to? <coughs> and I had to humble myself. Basically, I was listening to what the Lord was trying to tell me what to do and how to do it. So I went back to the three men that I was talking to. And I said, I just got something I want to share with you. said, man will judge you because of your past. They will tear you down because of it. They will speak ill of you. But God does not see your past. Because when you are saved, your sins are washed clean. Amen. Therefore, only God sees is your future. Praise the Lord. So do not let man judge you but let God call you and call it by you. Wow. Amen. And one of the young men says, man, that's powerful words. He goes, that is words of encouragement. I said, exactly. But it is so true with each and every one of us today. We could either be talking down to, or we can uplift somebody just by simple words, by speaking words. You know, even in younger generations, 
younger kids because of what we say to them, you can tear them down so easy. Yes, yes. Just by the simple words of saying something like you are useless. Oh, sorry. You are worthless. And it's what is sad about that, even, even today the enemy will use that against you because once that word is said to you, you take it and you comprehend it here and you play it over and over and over and eventually you begin to believe it. And when you start believing it, you become nothing. And with that, that is where it comes into the play of what James, the book of James says. You can speak blessings and cursing out of your same mouth. And is what is sad about this, and this could step on a few toes, even Christians will talk down about other Christians, but yet in the same time they call themselves a Christian and worship the same God with the exact same tongue and the exact same mouth that they use yes. to talk. Yes. The power of words. And it's what is sad is you see these words sometimes gets expressed even upon family. And it is sad that you see husbands will cut down their wives and kids and wives do the same thing as they wonder why their kids end up living the way they live. Because of what they see. For an example, if a son sees his dad speaks ill of his wife, he will grow up and speak ill of his mom and even speak ill of his own wife because it is something that he has seen. It is the power of words. And is what is sad about it, daughters will even do the same thing. If they are raised up in a household where they see how their mom gets treated, eventually they start thinking that this is the way it's supposed to be. And that is the life that they choose. And it all goes by the power of words. Have you ever heard the saying, sometimes you have to watch what you say around little ears? Mm -hmm. I have a six-year-old that just now realized, hey, I can copy everything they say. So you have to be careful with what comes out of your mouth because they will repeat what you say. Even if it's the truth upon truth and you don't want it to get out, they will say what they hear. It goes by the power of words. And it's what is sad about it, even any, everywhere you look, words are thrown out to either destroy or to build up. And one of the key things that I want to say, if you feel like you have been put in an area where someone has talked down to you and told you that you were worth nothing, that curse can be broken and it can be broken today and you can be set free from that chain of bondage. Yes. Because that's what it is. It is bondage. It is a controlling power that someone tries to put on you to control you. When someone says you are worth nothing, they're trying to control you. What mm -hmm. I've always wondered, if someone speaks that way, then they must see something in you that you haven't seen yet. And sometimes people get jealous of that. Mm -hmm. I made a comment, and this even can even fall back to show you how powerful words are. I made a post a week ago on Facebook talking about a calling. Some people took it as of if I was being judged because of my calling and it really wasn't a statement upon that. It just all went on because of how some people see someone else's calling. They get jealous of that calling or they get jealous of that anointing and they try to shut it down. How do they shut it down? They speak ill of you. Or they speak bad about you and they want to curse you. They want to bring you down to their level. And then they speak very low of you.
one of the scariest things about words and about cutting down. You'll even see it in the school systems today. Teachers go down their kids instead of lifting them up. When you tell someone they're no good, eventually you believe it. And Vince and James Baker will witness to this. We work with an employee that if you keep telling him something over and over and over, even though it's not even true, he begins to take it and to believe it. And once it is sunk in, he runs with it. You can tell him first thing that morning he is sick. And you get other people look at him and say, man, you don't look that good. You are sick. I guarantee you by 11 o'clock he is going home. Because he begins to believe it. And is where I am getting at, there is too many people that has allowed man to judge them by the outside and has talked them down to the point to where they feel like they are nothing. And therefore it hinders what God has called you because you are made so much better than what someone else says of you. Years and years ago, my dad had wrote a song called Precious Stone. In God's eyes, I'm a precious stone. And the way he always explained it to me, what he meant, he said, man looks at you on the outside, but God sees you from the inside. Praise the Lord. Amen. To yes. him, since you are created by him in the way he loves you so much, to him you are that precious stone. Yes, yes, amen. Even though on the outside you may look rough and ragged and beat up, tore up, but on the inside you are something precious. And one of the reasons why I've been focusing so much on this this week is because I feel like so many ministries have been torn down by man that God has been trying to bring forth. But people will not step out because they have been torn down. They have been told that they are nothing, that they are not going to be able to do what they are told to do. Man did not call you. Man did not qualify you. God called you and God qualified you. Amen. Some people never know that there is so much power in your own tongue. With your tongue in that mouth, you can start rumors that create drama. Even today, there is some of you here that have been told that you are nothing. Some of you here today have probably faced verbal abuse because of what some of you have been called. But that chain can be broken. One of the ways that I'm going to break this chain is to tell you that you are a child of God. Yes, hallelujah. That makes you somebody. Yes, amen. Even when somebody has told you that you are a nobody. Amen. Yes. You do not have to live trapped in your past. You can step out of that and you can go forward. Yes. There's too many people that have been put in a box because they allowed somebody to label them and to put them in that box. It's time to step out of that box yes, and become who you are supposed to be. Yes, amen. And I'm going to go as far as this to even say, if you are that person that loves tearing somebody down, I'm going to invite you to the altar because that chain needs to be broken as well. Yes, it does. Because that goes to show you're just trying to control somebody with your tongue. Mark Lowry one time shared a story when he was little. I like Mark Lowry. I like some of the songs he sung to kind of put the name of the song. He's the one that wrote, Jesus, Did You Know? Mark Lowry one time made a comment. He said when he was little, he goes, my dad looked at me and he said, son... Your rear end did nothing wrong, but your mouth is about to get in a whole lot of trouble. 
because of words of what is being spoken out. And I'd be one of the first ones to be honest with you. When I was little, I always tried to blame it on my hearing, but I was always known to back up. <laughs> Instead of just keeping my mouth shut, I would say something back. <clears throat> Grandma's sitting over here nodding, so she's agreeing. So I know I'm right. <laughs> but with your mouth, you can either speak blessings, yes, you can. or you can speak death upon somebody. Yes. I've been doing a lot of studying out of Ezekiel. Ezekiel went through a lot. When he told them to prophesy to these dry bones, I truly believe he was meant to prophesy to Israel to help bring them back to life. That's right. Yes. Spiritually. Yes, that's right. And as what is sad about it today, so many of us have been spoken ill of and tore down that we don't even know what to do. And I am here to speak and to pray life back into your situation. Yes. Also yes. to try to tell you how much power there is in your words. In your prayer. Prayer is words that you pray for. Things that you pray for. The needs that you pray for. There is power behind your words of what you say. That's why one of the things I, I even mentioned. You can either speak death into your own life. If you believe nothing is going to happen and you say it. Then eventually you just curse yourself. But if you say, Lord, I believe that you can use me to do mighty things, then watch him use you to do mighty things. If you pray that, Lord, to heal you, you can speak life into your own sickness. You can speak life into your own problems that you are going through. You can speak life to the mountain. You can tell this mountain to move. That is speaking life into it. You can even ask God to give you the strength to overcome that mountain. And that is speaking life into the situation that yes. you are facing. You know, sometimes we even say, man, I hope I'll make it through this. Why do we have to say that when we say, you know what, God, I know we will make it through That's this. That's right. Amen. Persevere. Yes. You just spoke life into your own situation. That's right. You can even speak life into your own problems when you are praying for a certain loved one that you're wanting to see God to change. Start praying life into them. Watch them change. Instead of speaking bitter and speaking down about that person or that individual, speak life to them. Tell them that they are something. And that God can use them to do stuff, to do mighty things. Yes, yes. Amen. Instead of speak down. Right. One of the things that popped in my head when I was studying this, some people are like vultures. They feed off of dead things. They feed off of rumors that have been talked about you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they spread the rumors. Because they are feeding off of dead things. So sometimes we even have to watch ourselves with what we say. Yes. That's right. Yes. <coughs> Start speaking life to somebody. And watch them change. And I'm here to tell you, if someone told you that God will never use you, they're wrong. Oh, right. God can use you. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. It drives me up the wall to hear somebody speak ill of something. Mm -hmm. Rumors are spread that way. What's sad about it? And 
nowadays society is a dog eat dog world. And it seems like murders are thrown out there just to get revenge onto somebody. I'll be honest with you. I'm human. I make mistakes. I've said some things before, and Jessica looked at me and said, Man, I can't believe you just said that. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what I said, I acted irrational. But what are you saying? Your tongue is sharper than a two-edged sword. You can cut them down. And I had to look at her and say, I'm sorry. Forgive me for what I said. And with me saying that, and I'm taking my message to heart, because I truly believe that there is somebody here that's been torn down, that's been told that they are nothing. And you need to be set free of that. Yes, yes, yes. Because you are something. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, You do not have to live the way man wants you to live because yes. of what they spoke over you or what they spoke to you. You are far more better than I. Too many people have been told that you're not going to do something. When God wants to use you to do something. saying that I pray that we start speaking life yes and not that yes if you feel like you're getting ready to speak here's a challenge if you feel like you're getting ready to speak ill of somebody start praying for them. speak life into this church. You can speak life into this building. You can say the cornerstone is going to grow and I believe it and you can stand upon it. Matter of fact, that's a testimony within itself because when I first started here, I kept telling you guys we're going to speak life into this and we're going to watch it grow and slowly we were getting the numbers. Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight. What you speak life into is not going to change right then and there. It's a continuous thing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It has to become your life. And if you're a husband, speak life into your family. Speak life into your wife. And if you're a wife, yes. speak life into your husband. That's right. Amen. Speak life into your kids. Amen. Tell them that they are someone. Yes. Hallelujah. Because they are. Yes, they are. Amen. Tell them that they can overcome great things. Tell people that. Watch them change. Amen. So as I come to a close, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. and if Brother Jim wants to come and play something, you're more than welcome. And if you are somebody here that has been hurt by words, I want to pray with you to break that chain and to pray healing to you and to pray that you have not only a spiritual healing but the mental healing so that you can be set free from the hurt. Because 
Verbal abuse is no joke. And if you are somebody that's been talked down to, let's pray and break that chain. Because that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you in bondage. The enemy wants you chained. He wants to be able to control you that way. And if he can get man to talk down about you, then he got you right where you want to be. But you are far more better than that. You are a far more better person than that. You don't have to live in that curse. You do not have to live in that curse and that bondage of your family's past. Because of what they live, you think that's the way you should live. That can be changed as well. Amen. Yes. You do not have to live that way just because your family live that way. You can change that. You can set a new course. And as of husbands that are here, I challenge you to start speaking life into your family. Yes, yes, amen. And the reason why I say that, husbands, is because we are the head of the house. We are the spiritual man. We, as men, when we get to heaven, we're going to be held accountable for the things that we have said on earth and for the ways that our family believes. You are going to be held accountable for that. Because even Joshua said, for me and my house, we will serve the yes. Lord. Hallelujah. He was setting an example yeah. for men that in your house, You are the responsible one. I don't know why I'm going to go this way, but I'm going that way anyway. In the book of Ephesians, Paul even told the husbands that you were supposed to love your wife as Christ has loved the church. So therefore, speak life into your family. <coughs> speak life into your grandkids. Yes. It's never too late. Amen. So if you are here and you feel like you are under bondage because of what someone has said to you, or you even feel like you're under bondage because of your past, let's pray and let's break that chain up.